Sammy Davis Jr. is star of the Will Maston Trio, and he is currently one of the hottest nightclub acts and recording stars in the country. He's also among the most versatile. He sings, dances, mimics, clowns, and plays several musical instruments. Sammy is now only 29 years old, but he spent most of his life in show business, from Harlem to Hollywood, with its attendant successes and crises. The worst about a year ago, when he lost an eye in an automobile accident. Sammy Davis now lives in this 12-room house built on the side of a hill in West Hollywood. He and his grandmother moved in about three months ago. Judy Garland used to live in this house, north of Sunset Strip. Now let's see what Sammy is up to. And then the, the rest of the kids will come up, and I think it'll probably be the finish. They might change it around. Evening, Sammy. Oh, good evening, Smurl. I, I hope I'd we're like not intruding. Either. Oh, no. We were just uh, brushing up on the rehearsal for the, for the Burl Show Tuesday. Oh, yeah. I'd like you to meet the, uh, my dad, Sam Davis Sr. Hey, good evening. And, and my uncle, Lou Master. Good evening, Will. Um, Will, tell me, has Sammy been behaving himself recently? He's a very fine boy. Just as simple as that, is it? That's right. <laughs> well, Sam Sr., just how did your boy get into the show business anyway? Well. I got Will, I was working with Will and I, we had a big show out and my mother said, you got to come home to take care of the kid. And I left Will in Philadelphia and I was away from him about three weeks. I went to catch a vaudeville show and I saw some guys dancing. I said, I can dance better than them and I called Will. He wired me a ticket. I went home and told my mother I was going back in show business. She said, I'll have your bag packed. And I went down to the Pennsylvania station and then she brought Sammy along with me and when she went to say goodbye, she says, here's your son. <laughs> and so he's been with you ever since, has he? Uh, Sammy, uh, I know you three have been working together for a long time. Uh, you're going to keep it that way? Oh, definitely, sir. We, we have enough bookings, fortunately, to, to go on for the next couple of years. We're doing a Broadway show this coming fall, and I guess when, that, when that's finished, uh, my dad and uncle will probably probably have enough to be happy with show business and retire. I guess my uncle will, as he is now, remain my manager. My dad will probably open up a, a clothing store someplace. <laughs> and you'll be his best customer, I'll bet. Oh, of course. Let, let me ask your father, uh, have you ever thought of quitting show business? Well, I wouldn't want to quit it. It's like, uh, it's like losing the best thing you ever had mm -hmm. to quit it. Sammy, uh, I know your father and uncle live nearby, but uh, wh where's your grandmother? Well, she, she's downstairs, sir. Uh, she, she lives downstairs, and uh, she's kind of nervous about TV. She's never been on it before. Dad, Will, do you think yes. you could probably uh, sure. get it? Go down and persuade her. <laughs> persuade her to come up, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sammy? Yes, sir. Um, do you want to talk about the auto accident? Oh, sure. It doesn't matter. It, uh, I'd like to put people at ease as much as possible about it. The uh, accident was uh, something I think that I'm a better person for. I think that it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's probably an odd thing to say. But in this business of ours, when we start to, to run and the good things start to happen and the, the door starts to finally open, a young guy gets a little too wrapped up in himself. And this was enough of a, a shock, a sit down, and also a realization that uh, there were more important things, more things to enjoy. This, being a nice human being. Well, it must have been quite a shock coming uh, sort of at the peak of your career, wasn't it? Yes, it was, sir, in the beginning. But then uh, my friends rallied around me and convinced me that there was still a lot to be done and that I probably probably wouldn't matter. And as it turned out, it, it's just been so wonderful because along with the accident, I had the realization of knowing that I had so many friends. Well, I know you have a large following of teenagers. Uh, how do you manage to win them over since uh, you do most of your work in nightclubs? Well, I think the records have a lot to do with it. I know that the, uh, we've been very fortunate with the records being hits, I mean, I mean going well. And uh, secondly, those who see us in nightclubs, and surprisingly, Mr. Morrow, a lot of kids come to see us because my dad and my uncle myself, we would do a very clean act. In the evening, you'll probably see like the uh, dinner shows. You'll see six, seven families sitting ringside, which is a very wonderful thing. Uh, don't you do something in one of your acts about uh, the boys from Syracuse or something like that? Oh, I, it was a bit that I started to do. It uh, actually happened. Uh, I, I felt kind of uh, kind of strange about it because 
uh, this happened, actually, and I finally developed it into a comedy bit. Uh, I was in Syracuse, and we worked a one-nighter. And after the one-nighter was over with, we were getting dressed in the dressing room, and all of a sudden, from outside, we heard cat calls, you know, like, all right, Sammy, come on, come on out of here, come on, come on, we're waiting on you, kid, come on. And I knew it was the teenage guys, and I said, all right, I'll be out in a minute. And there was a big, huge door, and I, I kind of pushed through the door, and here, standing in front of me, were the Amboy Dukes, uh, ramifications of thereof, and Blackboard Jungle guys with the, with the boots and everything, and they were, you know, they stood like this, looking at you, you know, with the shoulder pointed at you. And I low walked, and I said, uh, well, fellas, what do you want to do? Do you want an autograph? Uh, can I uh, do something for you? And they all looked at me, and I said, incidentally, who was making the noise outside? And they said, well, there, uh, nobody was. Could we have your autograph? That's 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 all. And I, I kind of got the feeling that they, they felt, at least I'd like to think that they felt that I uh, was part of them, you know, one of them. Uh, Sammy Davis, tell me, aside from your new house, what physical things has your success brought you? I'm glad you asked me. Come. Yeah, you see, Mr. Morrow, in the old days, I was uh, not exactly poor, but like most kids who lived in Harlem, I, I had a, uh, a good suit, only one good suit, and one good pair of shoes that I wore on Sunday. And it was kind of a strange thing, so I guess I talked it over once with Jerry Lewis, and I think we both had the same kind of feeling. Then we finally made it, we would buy all the clothes that we possibly could. We couldn't go in and buy one suit, you had to buy five. You know, you couldn't go in and buy a two shirts, you had to buy two dozen. And the, kind of the odd thing with me with the suits is that there is a preconceived idea almost about performers wearing uh, sharpie clothes. So naturally, I had to buy all the sharp clothes first. And I'd like to show you the difference. So this is an old suit I used to wear with the, uh, the big shoulders. And so now that's what I have to wear because that's what people almost expect from an entertainer. And uh, I'd like to show you the type of clothes that I like to wear all the time. It's a, a real Madison Avenue-ish, you might say, uh, Brooks Brothers style. And it's more comfortable. And uh, I remember I wore it once in Boston to a teenage rally at Record Hop. And some kids, I made the mistake of wearing it, and some kids said, oh boy, big that square. You know? And this is the way I went, with no stone and so on. That has the narrow lapels too, hasn't it? Uh, Sammy, tell me, aside from clothes, what do you collect? Oh, I, I collect, uh, collect guns. What kind of guns? Western uh, single action coats. I have a, have a couple of interesting pieces. This is an imitation, a very expensive imitation of a, a bunk line special, which was uh, used by Wyatt Earp. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's a phony, but it's a, it's a nice one. Now, wait a minute. Uh, what did he use that for? Well, he would use it very oddly. Instead of uh, drawing, as you see the movie, guys do. He yep. would draw it. Instead of firing, he would actually hit them over the head with it or disarm them physically this way instead of firing it because he was one of the few guys in the West who uh, didn't want to kill people, it seems. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of interesting things from the, the aspect of, uh, well, the movie hero of cowboy films and the, the real guy. I, I'd like to show you, if I could, with this belt that I'm wearing. We started investigating this thing a little while ago, and even to the strap in the old days that I'm now tying. In those days, when a nice home folk saw a guy with a gun strapped down like this, he was either one of two things, a sheriff or a gunslinger. Uh-huh. Which is kind of interesting. And there are all kinds of things. And this is a movie holster. By that I mean that inside it has steel in here to brace on the hip. Yes. And they keep this open so that the gun will fall in easily. I and there's one particular trick that I'm kind of proud of. I'd like to do for you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I have another hobby. <laughs> Tell me, uh, are you planning to play in westerns? Oh no, but uh, it's kind of funny that the two things kind of go together because just recently I gave Frank Sinatra a set of uh, Lonely Rider, a set of 38s matched, which are just about my most priceless pair of guns I have, because he's going to do a western, and my first two pictures will be done for Frank Sinatra which is sort of a tie-in for me because he's my idol as a sort of a great entertainer and so forth. But the other hobby of mine is photography. And this is a picture here that I had made in Canada. I saw a little boy on the street. It cost me a nickel to have it made, and I had to give him a nickel for the closing. Huh. And this over here is the first picture that I ever 
had taken it all. I, like most amateurs, you start and you get the, the lucky shot. And this was it. And that kind of dragged me in for the whole thing. Uh -huh. what, what sort of camera do you favor? Well, I, I have the double lens reflex, and I, I have a good 35 millimeter, and I do a lot of available light shooting. It's uh -huh. a, a new trend in photography. No flash bulbs, no strobes or anything. I have those, but it's sort of a more natural photography. I see. Uh, do you always learn things easily? No, some things come pretty hard. Uh, uh, some things are very close. Music, for instance, is very close to me. I can learn a song, and my arranger, Morty Stevens, keeps bugging me because he says I should learn to read music, but I think that would be doing it the, uh, the, the easy way, and I enjoy doing it the other way. It's a story. About two years ago, I was doing an impression. I kid around a lot on the stage, and my dad and uncle, they always stand and just watch and amazed by what I'm going to do, I guess, because never, I never go according to script. And I was doing Louis Armstrong, and I was doing a vocal impression of Louis, and I yelled to the guy in the band, throw me a trumpet, and he gave me his trumpet, and I was going, Give your office over to me, and you will always be La Vie Rose. And almost automatically, I picked up the trumpet and went, <laughs> And it was the exact same note that I heard Louis play on the record, and I, and I was frightened by it because I had never played before, but that's... Uh, I've never had any lessons or anything on something. I guess that's about the way it goes. Tell I, me. I think probably Mom is back now. Yeah, let me ask you one more question before you go. Do you find much difference in audiences in different parts of the country? No, I, Mr. Morrow, I think that audiences are just about the same. I, I don't feel like some of the people in our business, if they have a mentality of six years old, I think that they're intelligent, they want to be entertained. I think that especially nightclub audiences are sick and tired of, of dirty, smutty material. I think they appreciate clean, wholesome material, and a guy who comes out without any gimmicks or without any gags and says, I'd like to offer my best, and I hope you like it. I think that's what they want now, and I think it's being proven, because a lot of young guys have come up in the last couple of three or four years and who have that sort of a pattern. You, you were going to let us meet your grandmother, I think. Yes, but she's out here, I think, now. They're probably talking. Yeah, there she is. Hi, Mom. You look awfully pretty. Good evening, Mrs. Davis. Good evening, Mr. Morrow. Uh, could you tell us what Sammy was like when he was a youngster? Sammy was a very sweet kid when he was small. Very easy to get along with. He always loved music. He uh, loved to dance. Tell me, uh, did he show any talent when uh, he was a mere child? Yes, he did. He loved to dance and loved to sing. Mm -hmm. uh, Sammy, I guess it's a long road you've traveled in your 29 years. Uh, what gives you the most satisfaction these days? Well, the most satisfaction I get, sir, is out of a little game I used to play with my, my grandmother. When I was a little kid, I remember her saying to me, one day you're going to be a very, very big star. And I guess as a child would say, I said, Mom, when I do, I will go to Hollywood and I'll buy you the biggest house in the world. Because uh, Hollywood is the mecca of show business and so forth. And just the fact that I'm here and home and she has She's here to enjoy it. This is the most important thing in the world to me. Uh, Mrs. Davis, uh, why were you sure that he would be a star? Well, he was always active and loved to go to shows, which I used to take him. And uh, I would encourage him to uh, stay in a bad company and be a nice boy, and maybe he would make it someday. Uh, tell me this, Mrs. Davis. Uh, does this wonderful house you have come up to your expectations. Is it like what Sammy promised you when he was a youngster? Yes, Mr. Morrow, very much so. I love it here. Beautiful home. Well, now, in addition to his career and the home and everything else, is there anything more you'd like for Sammy? I would love for him to get married and have a wife and a family. Well, uh, any chance of that happening soon, Sammy? Uh, so what else is new, Mr. Morrow? Is there anything else happening around the country? <laughs> <laughs> all right, tell me, of all the things you do, singing, dancing, acting, comedy, uh, what do you like best? Well, like all singers and dancers and comedians, I long to be a dramatic actor. In the pictures that are coming up, I think I'll get the opportunity. As for now, I enjoy singing because this gives me a chance to reach an audience that normally I would never reach, the teenagers who buy records. Uh -huh. Uh, what sort of role would you most like to play in the movies? I, I don't know, sir, quite frankly, but I would like to do something honest and forthright and uh, 
completely sincere, and that's the, the type of thing that Mr. Kazan does on the screen or that Mr. Marlon Brando plays. I'd like to play not that particular type of role, but an honest movie. Uh -huh. well, where, where did you get your knack for mimicry? I got it from a very, a very, very dear friend of mine. In fact, two dear friends, Dick Wesson and Larry Storch. They taught me, which sort of, to me, proves that show business isn't a cow and colas thing. You know, the coal and callous, oh, I'll be all right. Coal and callous <laughs> thing. Yeah. I'm not too nervous. This is about the, oh my goodness, I think the pains are coming. <laughs> Sammy, thank you very much for letting us come and visit you. And thank you, Mrs. Davis. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. And will you say goodbye to your dad and your uncle, please? I certainly will. Right. Thank you very much indeed. We'll be back in a moment.